Hello knitting friends, are you looking for an absolute beginner knitting project? Well look no further because these will fit the bill. These are fingerless mittens and they're super easy to make. They keep your hands nice and warm while keeping your fingers free to text or type and I've got very simple step-by-step -step instructions on how to make these simple beautiful fingerless mittens. <music> Hello, welcome to Jack Knits, and we're going to knit today a perfect project for an absolute beginner knitter. These are fingerless mittens. They are quick and easy to knit up because we are just basically knitting a flat rectangle. No fancy increases or decreases, no thumb gusset to worry about. We're just knitting them flat, seaming them up at the end, and leaving a little gap for the thumb. It's that easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do this really fun ribbing stitch that I chose to do for these fingerless mittens. We're gonna cast on, bind off, knit this wonderful stitch, and then show you how to seam up at the edge, leaving that gap for the thumb. So let's get these on our needles. I'm going to, I'm using a number six US size needle that gives it a nice tight fit and uh, worsted weight yarn. You can use any kind of worsted weight yarn you want to, to uh, use. I'm using this Hobby Lobby brand Yarn Bee and the color is, or the, the brand is Rustic Romantic. The color is Barnwood, Barnwood Fence. So as I thought that would make a really pretty tweedy type um, mitten. So let's begin by casting on, we're gonna cast on 32 stitches for this, for this project. And I'm going to use the long tail cast on method and I'm also going to leave an extra extra long tail more than what I need for this project because I want to use that tail to seam up so let's give myself a really long tail almost way more than what I need and let's cast on 32 stitches now if you need a refresher on how to do the long tail cast on method I will put a link in the upper right hand corner for you but let's get started with this long tail cast on. You can use any other long or any other cast on method you choose as well. And we'll do 32 stitches. Okay, I have got 32 stitches on my needle. So now, as you know, I've almost got a ridiculously long tail. I'm probably not gonna need all of this tail, but better safe than sorry um, to have a good long tail for the um, seaming up at the end. So let's get started right away with our first row of stitching. This uh, ribbing stitch is called the cartridge rib stitch. It's a nice bulky rib and it will stretch out really, um, really wide. So I think it will fit um, these 32 cast on stitches will fit most size hands, I think, because it's very stretchy. All right, so this cartridge rib, rib stitch is a two row repeat. And row one starts with three knit stitches. One, two, and three. That's the beginning of our row. Then we're going to start with our five stitch repeat pattern, which starts with one purl, and then four knit stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then that is going to be our repeat. Purl one, knit four, and we're gonna do that till the end, until we have, we're gonna knit it to the last four stitches, and then we're going to purl one and knit three, because we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have a little bit different short of stitches at the end, but that's by design. four stitches is a purl one and then knit three. All right, that completes row one. Now row two in this two row repeat is very similar. Now these, these stitches are just knit and purl, so it's super easy. So row two is going to start off right away with our five stitch repeat and we're gonna start with purling two. So one purl, two purl, and then we're going to knit three. And back to purling two. And 
knit three. And we will do that all the way to the end to the last two stitches, which will be purl two. two stitches will be purl two. All right, and that is the two row repeat that we're going to continue to do for this entire mitten. And we're gonna do this for seven and a half inches. I'll check back with you after I've knitted a couple inches so we just can see how, how that stitching is looking and then we'll finish up and then bind off and seam up. All right, how are we coming? I've knitted a couple inches here with this cartridge rib stitch and this is how your stitching should look like. These really big, lumpy um, rib stitches. And then the back looks like this. So if your stitching does not look quite like this, you might wanna just check to make sure that your knit and purl sequences are correct on each row, making sure that on row one, you're starting with knit three before you do the five stitch repeat. And on row two, jumping right into that five stitch repeat, purling two and knitting three. So just recheck that if your stitching isn't quite looking like this. But I will continue to do this sequence of knitting um, until my piece measures about seven and a half inches. And then we'll come back for binding off and seaming. Okay, so I have finished knitting several rows and my length of my project is now seven and a half inches. So now I am ready to bind off. You wanna finish your knitting rows when and finish with a row one. The reason for that is when I now go to bind off, my tail will end up on this side um, of my knitting, same as the tail of my cast on. So I'll be able to use the tail of my cast on and the tail of my bind off to seam up the um, edges meeting together where the thumb hole is going to be. Okay, so that's why you want to end with row number one. So now we are ready to bind off. I'm just going to do a regular bind off for this just to keep it very simple. But if you've got a favorite bind off you would like to do, feel free to use whatever bind off works well for you. But I'm just going to do a simple bind off by knitting one, knitting two, and then passing that first stitch over that next stitch and continue in that fashion all the way to the end. And make sure it's bind off fairly loosely. You don't want a really tight bind off. You want it to uh, maintain about the same tension or slightly looser than the tension of the rest of your knitting. So I will bind off all the way to the end of this row. Okay, now that I've binded all the way across, I am going to leave again um, a little bit of a tail because I want to have some uh, yarn to do my seaming from the top down to meet up where the thumb is. I don't need a super long tail, but just enough to uh, seam for a couple inches. We can pull that through. Okay, so now we're going to seam these edges together. This is our right side and this is our wrong side. So we're gonna put our right sides together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tail from our cast on and seam up for about four and a half inches, stop. Then we're going to take our tail from the bind off uh, side of the project and seam down for about one and three quarters of an inch and that will provide a little gap for our thumb um, positioned about right. Now if you're unsure whether or not my placement of the thumb uh, works for you as you're seaming, go ahead and just try it on and see once if it fits comfortably with where your thumb is and also the size of the thumb hole, if that fits well with, with your thumb. So you can you know adjust as needed, uh, stop a little bit earlier, make the thumb a hole a little wider or a smaller, whatever fits with your hand. So let's, um, let's do this uh, seaming up from the bottom first and I'm gonna use a seaming method that my mother actually taught me how to do. It's a very seamless stitch and it provides a nice edge for seaming together two pieces of uh, fabric. So again, right sides together. I am going to first start by just kind of joining these two edges together. And now I know it's a little difficult to see, but hopefully you can identify here when I roll this fabric over, the very edge of my um, project has little bumps here and in between those bumps are is a little strand 
a bump and a strand, if you can see that in this fabric. I know this yarn is a little hard to see. Similarly on this side, we have a strand, bump, strand, bump. And we are going to insert our needles in and out of these strands between the bumps. Okay, and this is how we're gonna do that. So my yarn is on this side. I'm gonna go into the very next strand of yarn that I see, the very next one, and I'm gonna go back in through the strand on this side that I previously used and pull it through. Now on this side of the fabric, I'm gonna go skip this bump and go into the next strand here, but again, go back through the strand that I previously used on the other side. Okay, now back to this side, skip the bump, go in the strand, and in the strand we previously went into on this side. All right, so that's, that's how we're going to seam this edge. Next strand, in through the previous strand. And I'm going to do that for about four and a half inches, and then we're going to stop for the thumb hole. Okay, so I'll meet you at four and a half inches. Okay, I've seamed up from the bottom for four and a half inches, so now I can stop this seaming <coughs> for now. And now I will go to this side of my uh, project from the bind off edge and I'm going to seam down just for a little while so I can leave my gap for my thumb. So we're going to do the exact same steaming stitch just now from the top down and we'll meet at the thumb gap. So again I'm going to connect these two sides of my top and do that same fashion in through the strand, out through the previous strand. And I will do that now till I meet, I think this is about a little over an inch and three quarters is what I'm gonna do till I get to my thumb hole. All right, I've seeped down for a little ways. I've got a little hole for my thumb. Let's just try it on, um, see once if that is about the right size. Yep, I think that fits really nice. So now I can just secure my end here on each side of my seaming just by going through that last stitch a couple more times. And then I'm just gonna weave in, weave in the ends here, right on the edge of my seam. I can just kind of weave it up one side and weave it down the other. Snip it off right at the end, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. right side out. All right, so now I've got two pairs of beautiful fingerless mittens that will keep my hands nice and warm, keep my fingers free for texting or typing, and this was a super easy project, right? I mean, not difficult, difficult at all. So I encourage you to give it a try. Straight rectangle knitting, little bit of a seaming, one stitch, and you're set to go. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you found this helpful, please give me a like, and don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications of new videos all about tips and stitches and creative patterns like these fingerless mittens. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting.